So welcome back. We've had coffee. The sun is still shining. It is. Um, and we've been cracking on, haven't we? Um, yes. I spot that you've put the big tree in. I haven't. I yet. have. Yes. Yeah. I, think that's I my wanted next to, to get it down. I think my sky had dried a bit while we'd been away, so I thought I'd uh, at least block it in, and then I can, uh, you know, fiddle with it from there. Yeah. And um, I'm shoot. Are you going to put it in? I am. Gonna, I'm, you're not going to cheat my, and leave no, it out. No. 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 It's my next. Uh, my next challenge. Next is there. on the list. Big tree. Yes. Yes. Definitely. So how are you going to deal with that? Do you sort of uh, map it out first or just sort of go, go nuts and just throw some paint at it, see how it looks? I think to use your phraseology, I'm just going to go nuts and throw some paint at Excellent. it and see what happens. Good, that's what we like. Now, Denise, what on earth are you doing there? You seem to have uh, abandoned paintbrushes altogether and gone for a more naturalistic approach. Yes, um, I think that one of the best tools for drawing sticks with is a stick. Okay, I guess that makes sense. You get some lovely scratchy marks with it. Yeah. Uh, it just makes some really fabulous, interesting little twiddles. That, they, they are good branches, I'll give you that. I'll have to, to tell people that one. No, don't tell anyone, it's a secret. <laughs> it's a good thing about doing this, I get to learn all the artist trade secrets and then I can put them all together and... And steal nice them all, that's, that's what yeah. you're doing it for, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So although we're both using acrylics today, would you approach this any differently if you were using sort of oils, say, or watercolours? I mean, surely there must be things you'd have to bear in mind if you were working in a different medium? Definitely. Um, if I were doing it in oils, I would probably approach it in a similar way, building up and just working around. Yeah. Watercolours is completely different. Uh, I would definitely approach that very differently. Uh, it was, it's more of a delicate approach. This can be quite bold. You can just go straight in with the colour. Mm. Uh, with a with watercolour, it's it's having to think a bit more carefully about your composition before you start. Yeah, absolutely. So, do you have a favourite then? Sure, you must have something you prefer. No, don't, not really. Don't, don't give me the you know the impassive answer. You see, like all three, you've got to. I do like all desert, three. Desert island paint. What would you take? Probably acrylics now because you can paint like watercolours with acrylics and you can use it like oils. Ah, yes, so it's the most answer, versatile. But yeah, that's good. Uh, different things for different reasons on different days. Yeah, well, fair enough. That's, that's, a, that's a good answer. I'll let you off on that one. Thank you. I don't know about you, Denise, but I'm in the uh, danger of plummeting into the fiddle zone. I agree. Are you also um, in danger of plummeting into the fiddle zone? Just about where I want to be, I think. There's just the last few little the last, strokes the last master strokes and then, uh, <laughs> then we're Let's done hope so we are yes well it's been fun i could quite happily spend a, a couple more hours here i think but easily you, know, you can't always do these things can you and uh, i think we've both got something out of it i think enough is enough i think there comes a point doesn't there yeah absolutely now you see the gazebo here at the end yeah the little one near the bridge yes yeah, yeah. well i know the lady who owns that so oh, wonderful would you like to go and have a little look inside absolutely yeah yeah they look like interesting little places i'd definitely be up for having a look yeah sounds like a plan okay okay let's pack up and uh, go to the gazebos you mean we don't have fairies that pack up for us well i reckon we might be able to persuade them you think <laughs> yeah i think i think we can we'll get away with it <laughs> Yeah, oh, this looks awfully quaint and nice. It is, isn't it? It's lovely. This is Rosie's. And from what I understand, uh, she has the occasional Scrabble tournament in here, oh. just looking out on the river. Wonderful. Wow, that's not a bad spot to do it, eh? Definitely not. Oh, Definitely it's quite not. nice to have a cup of tea in here and watch the world go by. And... Peaceful moment in the afternoon, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a sort of little uh, summer house type vibe, isn't it, really? It is, yes. And I don't know a huge amount about them, so uh, should we go and see a man who does? John, okay. down at Ware Museum? Yes, OK, yeah, let's do that. So we're at Ware Museum. OK. And John here should be able to tell us a bit more about the gazebos. OK, let's go and find him. OK. Hello, John. Welcome to Ware Museum. Thank you. This is Fraser. Hello, nice Good. to meet you. We've been painting down at Ware Gazebos, and I understand you have a bit more information on their history. Yep, very interesting aspect of Ware's history. If you'd like to follow me, we can show you some of it. 
The main gazebo that I believe is in the centre of the pictures you were painting, uh, there's a brick in it that says the year 1697. That's quite yeah. early. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just as Britain had acquired a Dutch king, King William of Orange, and uh, so the gazebos became known as Dutch houses. They've only acquired the name gazebos in comparatively recent times. Ware became a malting town in Elizabethan times, and as London then began to grow at a huge pace, because we have the river connecting down to mm -hmm. the Thames, we became a principal supplier of malt to the London brewers. And of course, in those days, everybody yeah. drank beer because it was safer than drinking the water. It was for <laughs> breakfast and everything, wasn't it? It was, indeed. Yes. Um, but as a consequence, our high street became very, very busy with huge numbers of carts bringing in uh, barley from local farms for malting. And of course, as a consequence, the town became comparatively wealthy. Okay. Um, and the people who owned the properties along the high street, that was a very noisy place. Yeah. And it meant that if they developed these Dutch houses down by the river, they could offer their guests and their family and friends so they were a quiet, quiet place for them to, to just enjoy themselves and enjoy a pleasant afternoon oh, tea well, beside the river. A, a cup very of good tea with a beautiful indeed. view. Yeah, well, we certainly yeah. found to be, it to be a very tranquil and relaxing place today when we were there. Yeah, um, they're of course hugely popular with visitors. Uh, yeah. We send all yeah. our visitors down the river for it to walk along beside the river. Yeah. Are, they, are they unique to where, or are there many other places that have them? I believe they have them in a number of other towns, but where people understand that we had the largest single collection of them. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, at one time there were 25 of them between where I understand you were painting your pictures and the Ware Bridge, mm, a distance wow. of only about a quarter of a mile. Uh, so that was, with yeah. one almost at the bottom of every garden yeah. against the river. Fantastic. And I, I noticed when we walked in, this, this rather beautiful object. Now, could, you, could you tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, this is another object that comes about as a consequence of the growth of the malting industry. Because the malt carts were chewing up the roads hugely, it led in late Elizabethan times to the need to positively attract people to the town. One of our innkeepers had the brilliant idea of commissioning the Great Bed of Ware. Uh, mentioned in Twelfth Night, Shakespeare's play, it's believed that uh, the innkeeper actually paid Shakespeare to mention the bed in one of his <laughs> plays, an early Marketing. product yes. placement. Fantastic. And uh, two years ago, uh, the Ware Museum was able to negotiate with the Victoria and Albert Museum the loan of the bed, and mm. it was uh, housed in this room. It occupied about 80% of the floor space of the room with just enough room so for people to walk it, around it. So it's so named because of its size? Is it Huge. Right. It's uh, at least four times the size of a standard modern double bed. And, and why was it made so big? Yeah. What, what's the, the reason behind that? Well, it could accommodate the whole of a coach load of people coming through the town. Interesting. I think the major <laughs> houses had large beds mm. in those days. Mm. Uh, there are stories of people being pinched and uh, bashed about in the great bed. And of course, rather naughtier stories than that uh, associate themselves. So do we, do we think, was it built for that reason or was it more of a novelty to attract attention? And it was very definitely a tourist attraction. Yeah. And uh, of course, what we have here is a full-scale replica of one of the main bedposts of the bed that was carved from an oak tree that had fallen in a, a copse that was owned by a former treasurer of the Ware Museum. Because, of course, the bed had to go back to the Victoria and Albert Museum. Yeah. Well, next time I go, I should be sure to ask for the Great Bed of Ware and, uh, and, and take a look at it in, it, in its glory.
Uh, well, thank you very much, John. It's been fascinating to, um, to hear thank more you. about where and, thank you. and the, um, the gazebos. Um, I guess uh, we, we'd best go and have a cup of tea somewhere. I think it's and, about uh, that time, isn't put it? Put our feet up. It's been a long day. so uh, And an enjoyable one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure showing you uh, the museum. Wonderful okay. to around. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been a pretty good day all round, I think. I've, I've learned a lot about where. I've had a good time painting. <laughs> and I've learned a lot about gazebos. <laughs> More than you probably needed to know. <laughs> uh, well, no, I don't know. It was all interesting. And uh, I think we've got some good paintings out of it. I think well. so. I really enjoyed it. So would you, having done that painting, would you now leave it or would you be tempted t tomorrow morning to have a, a quick fiddle? I th think I would need to have a look and see. Yeah. Uh, might do a little minor tweaking, but it's only ever minor tweaking. Yeah. And then uh, get it framed up, presumably, and make its way out into the world. Hopefully, hopefully. Or you could just keep it as a memento of our day together. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's been pleasure. a pleasure to visit you and see your studio and uh, and to see where. Uh, thank you. It's been a thoroughly enjoyable day. Well, it's been lovely having you come over. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Join us next time for more Fraser and Friends. Mm -hmm.